Hi everyone, I'm Emily and welcome to our very first episode of Forbes Flash. Each week we're bringing you the highlights of the week from our Forbes studio. Thanks for joining us and let's get started. First and foremost, we hope you had a restful and safe holiday weekend. While you were out, Nike co-founder Phil Knight got a whole lot richer. His net worth is up $1.9 billion. Yes, billion. He can thank fellow billionaire Jeff Bezos for the boost. Nike's deal with Amazon sent stocks up 11% last week. In other big money news, the three stories you need to know this week come with some major dollar signs. First, we took a look at the world's highest paid athletes, and they've got some healthy salaries. Even more impressive, we looked at 10 athletes under the age of 25 who make millions each year. At the top of the list is Neymar. The Brazilian soccer superstar made $37 million in just the past year. Changing gears to catch up with our reporter Dan Alexander's blockbuster story about Eric Trump's foundation. In case you missed it, he originally explained how the president and his son were turning donations into income for the Trump Organization. His latest story details where the $1.8 million raised by the foundation in 2014 actually went, and it wasn't all to St. Jude's, as was promised to donors. Last but not least, some news from the entertainment world that has Wonder Woman fans cheering. The film is officially the biggest hit ever from a female director. It has earned a record-breaking $327 million in just 27 days and doesn't appear to be slowing down anytime soon. If you follow any part of the agriculture world, you likely knew that Forbes held our Ag Tech Summit in Salinas, California last week. Guests from around the country joined to learn about advances in biotech to precision farming, with special field tours bringing the experience to life. Check out everything that happened by searching the hashtag Forbes Ag Tech on Twitter. We are here with Forbes Wealth reporter Chase Peterson Withorn, who is here to talk about his latest deep dive into the fortunes of Trump's cabinet. So you first did this back in December when the cabinet was being selected, correct? Yeah, that's right. And then now we've updated it this week um, to reflect the final selection. So tell us a little bit about what you discovered. Yeah, so uh, Trump's cabinet appears to be the wealthiest in modern American history. Uh, it might be the wealthiest uh, yeah, in the history of the United States uh, in general. Uh, you know, throughout his campaign, even from day one, he said that he wanted to bring his, his rich friends into, into the positions of government. He said that he knew all the best people, the best deal makers. Uh, and so that's kind of what he's done. I mean, everybody on the list is basically a millionaire or, or very close to it. Um, and some of them are his oldest friends, some of them are fellow billionaires. So he's definitely, uh, definitely achieved what he's, what he's kind of said that he's going to do. So when he first had the cabinet selections, they were worth was it 3.5 billion uh, together? It was 4.5. 4.5 4. billion. Uh, yeah. It was 4.5 when he was, uh, there were, he still had a couple people to go. And, th and this number doesn't include Trump himself, who's worth 3.5. Okay. Um, he's worth as much almost as yeah, the cabinet. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. He would be the wealth, he's wealthier than everybody in the cabinet, but some of them are, are pretty close. His friend Wilbur Ross is 2.5, so he's, he's close. Um, yeah, so that was in December, and he had picked everybody except for there were two people he still had to pick, which was agriculture and veterans affairs. Uh, and since then, basically, everybody has filed new disclosures. Uh, so we have more information on some people. And then um, the two people that he named are, are millionaires, but, uh, but not at the level of, of Wilbur Ross or anything like that. And then one person, the Secretary of Labor, uh, dropped out. He was worth $45 million, and he was replaced uh, by someone who's only worth a, a few million dollars. So. Only a few. Yeah. So Wilbur Ross, where did he um, earn most of his wealth? Yeah, so Wilbur Ross, like almost everybody else uh, on the list, is self-made. And he worked for Rothschild. He was a bankruptcy advisor for a long time and actually helped Donald Trump out of a jam uh, back in the day at the Trump Taj Mahal in Atlantic City. Uh, and then he started his own investment company, a kind of private equity company. And he basically made a fortune turning around um, struggling businesses, bankrupt businesses. He did it in the textile industry, he did it in the coal industry. Uh, and then he sold that, that private equity company to a, a big company called Invesco. Uh, but he stayed on and, and basically just continued turning around companies. So. So he's, he's made at the top of the list. He, yeah, exactly. He's the wealthiest uh, cabinet so, member. So other than being the wealthiest cabinet member, what is something that stands out from, from a different cabinet member's wealth? I mean, it really is the sheer numbers of it. He's really just been some of the, there's a few others who have been really, really successful, like Steven Mnuchin mm -hmm. as, as an investor. But Wilbur Ross has just made a tremendous amount of money, uh, basically just turning around companies and doing it very, very well, just very shrewd. 
So. so he's had a long relationship with Trump, and you mentioned that many of the cabinet members actually have had relationships with Trump. Um, who else has long-standing relationships? Yeah, sure. So, well, so Wilbur Ross is definitely the one that, that really comes to mind, where they're, they've, they're friends, they live actually near each other. I, I'm sure it's not on purpose, but they live, <laughs> well, I don't know. I would assume it's not on purpose, but, uh, but they live near each other in Palm Beach. Others just, you know, have, have big ties to Republicans like Betsy DeVos, um, and then there's other people outside of, maybe they're not in the cabinet, but they are uh, other key Trump advisors like, like Steve Bannon, who have, you can see these ties to the Mercers, who are friends with Trump and Breitbart and all of that. So mm-hmm. he's not on this list, but, uh, but he's another person who's kind of obviously very close to Trump uh, on a day-to-day basis in, in the West Wing, who you know, has, has a lot of ties to, to Trump. And will any of these cabinet members see their wealth change drastically due to their position in Trump's cabinet? Yeah, well, that's a good question. Uh, I think a lot of people are, are looking very closely at that, and we, and we certainly are. Um, certainly, theoretically, nobody's wealth should change just because of their position. Uh, a lot of these people are, are just, you know, I mean, they're invested in the market, and so in an indirect way, uh, you know, their decisions can influence even diversified wealth. So I, th- I think it would probably be more along those lines, although, you know, you sometimes do see uh, conflicts of interest where people have, will hold on to stuff. The biggest, the biggest examples of that are, are really Trump himself, mm-hmm. where he's held on to his real estate uh, holdings, and if, if, depending on what they do with certain tax incentives and things like that, it could really influence it. So it's, it's probably more of a concern actually for Trump than most of these cabinet members, but, uh, but there still are some of them who have who've held on to, to some things where you know, it, it, it may change. Thanks for joining us on Forbes Flash. Tweet your feedback to us using hashtag Forbes Flash, and we'll see you next week. Tune in every Friday morning, same time, same place.